On the 28th of April, 2025, Spain and Portugal were hit with a massive power outage that darkened the Iberian Peninsula for up to a day. Many people blamed Spain's aggressive move towards solar and wind as the cause of the blackout, with no evidence. I released this video where I shared my theory on the outage and how grid-forming inverters were a fairly straightforward solution to the problem. If the phrase grid forming inverters has you scratching your head, you might want to start with my previous video on the Spanish power outage and return here after watching it. In brief, grid forming inverters allow renewable resources like wind and solar, which dominate the Spanish grid, to mimic large thermal power plants with massive rotating turbines and generators. The electronics in these inverters mimic the rotational inertia and help grid operators maintain the proper frequency. On June 18th, 2025, the Spanish grid operator Red Electrica, sorry, I can't trill my R's, released their analysis of the power outage blackout in the Spanish Peninsular Electrical System, the 28th of April, 2025. So I figured the honest thing to do was to look at my analysis in the context of theirs. All of the graphics shown come from that report. There are several graphs of voltage over time on the high voltage transmission lines. Ideally, these would be a flat line or at least very slowly by at most a few kilovolts. The oscillations you see are not the normal 50 Hertz AC power cycles, but lower frequency and something that is not desirable. Before we get into the details, you need to understand why circuit breakers exist and why they trip. All devices connected to the grid, from power plants to blenders, are designed to operate within a specific voltage, frequency, and current range. In your home, you have circuit breakers that trip if the current gets too high, which prevents fires and damaging your electronics. Better to lose electricity than to have the house burned to the ground. What we're talking about here is high voltage transmission lines that get the power from the power plants to the substations. There the voltage is reduced as the power moves towards where it's needed. And these substations have circuit breakers that trip if the voltage gets too high or too low. They do this to protect the equipment connected to the transmission lines. The report starts by describing what's happening on the Spanish grid from midnight to noon, pointing out some oscillations and dips, all of which were successfully managed, and the grid entered the afternoon with no reason to think that in 34 minutes it was going to come crashing down. Three minutes after noon, things started to go awry. For a duration of 4 minutes and 42 seconds, a significant 0.6 hertz oscillation was observed in the electrical system. The grid operators reduced power exported to France and Portugal and made other changes to damp down these oscillations. The source of these oscillations was eventually determined to be a solar plant in Barados. At 12.16, the 0.6 hertz oscillation reappeared and the grid operators focused on dampening these oscillations. The voltage also dropped as low as 380 kilovolts, 20 kilovolts lower than the nominal voltage. The action of the operators brought the system back into nominal and everything seemed to be within acceptable parameters. By 2019, a new oscillation at 0.2 hertz appeared, likely coming from the European grid. The grid operator took additional measures to further dampen these oscillations again reducing power being sent to France and Portugal, and reducing system impedance. These interventions worked, and the system recovered by 1222. But the voltages across the country were rising, primarily having to do with reduced exports of electricity. So operators took additional actions to reduce the voltage on the transmission lines. At this point, the problem with the oscillations was bad enough that 845 megawatts of capacity went offline, primarily at smaller facilities. Also, one nuclear power plant reported that they may trip or go offline due to the oscillations. 
Given all of the challenges grid operators were having, they requested two methane power plants come online. But this would require at least an hour and a half. At 1230, the system was still operating within acceptable parameters. At 1232 and 57 seconds, a trip occurred at a substation located in the province of Granada. The voltage there was low, but not so low that it should have triggered the line to trip. The trip caused the voltage to increase across the grid, but it remained within acceptable levels the export flow to France dropped to nearly zero. Management of reactive power is now an issue. I'm not gonna go into the details of reactive versus active power as it's complicated and not intuitive. But in brief, reactive power is important for inductive loads like motors and is critical to managing the grid. At 1233 and 16 seconds, 19 seconds after the trip in Granada, another line tripped, taking 582 megawatts of production with it. 360 milliseconds later, a solar power plant went offline, taking an additional 145 megawatts with it. The available evidence is that, like the fall in Granada, the voltage and current at these locations was within acceptable limits. It's possible that the substations were configured for reducing the oscillations that were happening throughout the day and should have been reconfigured for the new reality, but they hadn't been. Less than a second later, three wind farms disconnected. 80 milliseconds later, a solar plant. 27 milliseconds after that, two more power plants went offline. This continued until a total of 834 megawatts were disconnected within 650 milliseconds. With each disconnection, the voltage on the grid increased and the frequency decreased, leading to more disconnections. At 1233, 19 and 620 milliseconds, Spain was importing 4.6 gigawatts of power from France through the AC network. This transmission line was tripped to avoid bringing down the French grid as well. The transmission line from Spain to Morocco also transitioned from exporting to importing and then tripping due to under-frequency protections. At 1233 and 24 seconds, about a minute after the first trip, the Iberian Peninsula is dark. The authors of the report came away with many suggestions, but I'll group them as following. Changes to process and procedures. Many of the recommendations are low cost and are likely to improve the situation markedly. They include approval of proposed changes to the operating procedures and reviewing over voltage protection settings to make sure they're correct. The second one is key as many circuit breakers tripped when they shouldn't have, hastening the collapse of the grid. The others require updating hardware on the grid, including installing more sensor units that allow the grid operators to see what's happening on the grid in real time. With greater visibility, they may be able to prevent cascading failures. One of these interventions is expansion of system capabilities for oscillation dampening, including both operational measures and infrastructure enhancements. I believe the grid forming inverters that I spoke about in my previous video on the Spanish power outage would be an example of a tool to dampen oscillations. So even though grid forming inverters aren't a headline solution, they would make it easier to stay out of the state that Spain found itself in at noon of April 28th. Early in the report, they say normally major incidences are usually triggered by a short circuit, a maneuver, or an event in general that clearly and unequivocally fixes the origin. But in this case, there is no origin produced by some of the causes indicated above. The incident was not caused by a lack of system inertia. Rather, it was triggered by a voltage issue and the cascading disconnection of renewable generation plants as previously indicated. Higher inertia would have only resulted in a slightly slower frequency decline. 
So those who thought that the problem was renewable resources without spinning turbines providing inertia were wrong. It also means that I was wrong that grid forming inverters would have prevented the problem. While reading the report, I wasn't thinking they needed grid forming inverters, though I'm pretty certain they would have helped, but grid enhancing technologies that I talked about in this video. The ability to direct which power line the energy flows through, increasing the capacity of power lines based on the weather, and computer models that optimize the hardware you have might have made the difference. The power outage in Spain was an instructive lesson for all grid operators. The grid is bigger, more complex, more connected, and more variable than the grid of 30 years ago. We have the tools to manage a modern grid, but we need to deploy these tools to have a grid that meets our decarbonization and electrification needs. The technology is available, but sometimes the mindset is missing. As I've said multiple times in these videos, the transmission grid is more important than generation. You can have all the solar farms and wind turbines you want, but it doesn't help if you don't have a way to get the power to where it's needed. If you've learned something, please like and subscribe, and you can buy me a beer. And if you'd like to learn more about what a modern electricity grid should look like, you can check out my series on electricity transmission here. And please forward this video to anyone you know who has wondered if they have to empty their refrigerator out after a power outage.